All right, hey guys, what's going on? So today we are going to be introducing a new series in general relativity. I think we're at a point in our in my tensor calculus course where we can start talking about general relativity. We can start talking about um, concepts in general relativity to make it understandable and to make advanced topics understandable as well. So there's a lot of great courses out there already on general relativity. And in this video, I'm going to sort of get our feet wet with what's going to make this channel unique, what's going to make this channel or this playlist stand out from all of those other ones. And I also want to um, talk to you just a little bit about a review on special relativity for these first two videos. Okay. So with that being said, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure to hit that, uh, go onto my Patreon page if you're interested in supporting the channel. Now let's get straight into the topic. So we're talking about a new series in general relativity now. This new series is going to be, it's going to build upon all the stuff in tensor calculus that I'm working on right now also. And here, so, so, there's a, again, there's a lot of great courses on general relativity already. Uh, so you might ask, you might be asking the question, what's going to make this video series unique and stand out? For one, um, I do intend to provide nice summary sheets, okay? And those are going to be provided on Patreon at the behest of just one dollar, okay? I'm I'm reducing everything down. To, uh, initially, it was just a charge. It was a charge of like twenty bucks if you want to become some ultra scientist or whatever. If you went on to my Patreon page, you know what I'd be talking about. I'm deciding to reduce all of this down to now just a dollar. Okay, if you want to support the channel, if you want to get the content, it's just going to be a dollar. And I have my reasons for that, right? My, my, what my primary reason is, I want you guys to learn. Okay. I don't, I don't, I'm not super interested in making a profit off of this, uh, partly because I kind of do have a job that I am making money at, but um, also partly because I, I truly do believe that uh, education is important and it should not be charged, you should not be charged 50 bucks, for example, by going on to um, at some online educational platform that charges you an arm and a leg to just learn something about woke vote like something woke or something like that or some uh voltaire or some or some uh math or something like that i fully intend to give you advanced topics in ways that i think are um bite-sized and easy to understand uh the summer sheets will accompany each video ish maybe i might have a summary sheet accompanying two videos it sort of depends on the nature of the content um again yeah it, it depends on the topic that's being talked about uh okay now i said one dollar right that's almost completely free this um i've since changed this so we'll be one dollar. One dollar. Again, I've sort of outlined my reasons why. I think that I think it, it'd be nice to make somewhat of a little profit off of this, but uh, off of this channel. But again, that's not the intent. The intent here is to give you guys information. Okay, let's get into special relativity. So, special relativity is. It's a huge topic in and of itself. I really just want to dedicate one, maybe two videos to special relativity, just as a review. So, a uh, unit distance um, is given by our Minkowski metric. Okay, Minkowski metric takes in two vectors and it gives it spits out a distance. Okay, and the idea here is that. We have, suppose we have dt, actually let's do this in special relativity forms. dx is usually on the horizontal axis, dt is usually the vertical axis, and the, this distance here 
is ds. And the way we get to ds is by taking this Minkowski metric, feeding it dt and dx, and getting that distance. Okay, That distance is given by this minus sign here, not a plus sign. Okay, that's gonna that's something unique about special relativity. Okay, and I'm not I'm not really going into the details on this because um, that's a course in special relativity. I intend to go into general relativity here. Um, and mu travel mu and nu travel between zero, one, two, and three, or t, x, y, and z. Um, the matrix eta. This is a Minkowski metric matrix is given by this, right, where this equals, right, this guy down here, right, this, this guy, okay. And then we have, um, what's, what's unique about this is that our, a unit time when you're standing still is uh, dt, is a, really just a change in time, right, so our initial, our final minus initial time. However, when you start moving, especially at um, degrees of the speed of light, then this actually is not true, and we'll see uh, how that how that works. This is all to say that in space time, um, we have a d x mu is actually a four vector that looks like this, and if we want to get a um, if we want to understand how we can get this distance here, when we multiply, um, or when we apply our distance to our metric, we get something that looks like this, right? So this is matrix multiplication, and we get something that looks like this. And so a distance between two spacetime points looks like this, right? So we define the two spacetime points, we slap on the Minkowski metric, and we get this guy right here. Uh, this is a two. Um, oh yeah, that's yeah, that's that's right, right because we have our spatial components. Oops, spatial components and our temporal component there. All right, let's take a look now at just some examples. So, a four vector for uh, momentum. It looks like this. So our energy momentum four vector where the temporal component is the energy of an object, the spatial components are the momentum of the object. So when we apply our, uh, we, when we apply our Minkowski metric, right, we get something that looks like this, right, and the difference between, um, the difference between these guys here is that um, the, uh, this guy here is going to be trend, uh, the nu's are going to be somewhat canceled, if you will. They're going to be summed over, and we're going to get mu. Okay, and so what we get is a multiplication that looks like this. Okay, and when we do that, we get this. These are all just spatial components, and we get this. All right. So if this equals this, then we get, um, then that means our momentum is zero, right? Because um, we have, uh, because we, we don't have momentum, right? So this is just the mass times the speed of light. And so that's going, so if this, Right, so, so this is zero, which is zero here. We're saying that this is equal to this. Um, we get this relationship right here, right? So we're just really plugging and chugging in, and we get this right here. And this is how we recover our mc squared. So our m, e equals mc squared is for a particle that's not moving in space. For a particle that is moving in space, however, we do need that, that um, that momentum component there. And so <clears throat> we get this for a particle moving in space, and what we can do is we can take the square root of, we can do some algebraic manipulation, we can take the square root of both sides, and then we can get 
to this point here where we factor out this guy and we take the square root of this, which is just mc squared, and we cancel out m's in here and we get this, right? So when the particle is moving, we get this, okay? Or we can write it in this way where gamma, I'll write it down, gamma equals No, uh, gamma is equal to 1 over. Gamma is equal to 1 over 1 plus v squared over c squared. Okay. And so our energy looks something like this. Okay. When we look at length contraction, a time when we look at length contraction, we can say, well, suppose we have a particle and it travels from here on a mirror and bounces back. And this particle is traveling at, this, say, the speed of light. It doesn't have to be traveling at the speed of light, but say it is, and then when it is, it's um, the, uh, the distance divided by the rate gives us the unit time. And so we get um, this right here where the L this L right here is the square of um, half of this distance times the height uh, plus the height squared, right? Because this squared plus this squared equals this squared. So that's where this comes from. We could take the square root of both sides. The total distance is going to be that times two because we're doing two times L. And so the total distance is equal to the rate times the amount of time given, and that's this. Right. So the amount of time given, if the particle is moving, so I'll put m for moving, is given by this right here. We're really, we're just what we're doing is we're uh, squaring both sides, and then we divide both sides by 4, and then we... Um, take this side, we bring it over here, and then we factor out this guy, and we get all the way down to here. We're multiplying by 1, okay? And when we multiply by 1, we get all of this. And notice how 2L over C, well, that's the same thing as 2L over C up here which is the same thing as the time as if we were standing still or as if the particle was standing still. So the particle standing still um, and then we take the square root of both sides, right? So when we take the square root of both sides, we get this. And lo and behold, we get um, this is our time time dilation uh, formula. And what this really says is that we have, we have, um, when it, if we're moving, then our sense of time actually changes, right? So if we're standing still in space and time, then we have a clock that's saying, that's doing something like tick, 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 tick. If we're moving, that tick, the distance between each tick is actually going to be different, right? So that's what it means to have a different sort of experience of time, or what that time dilation actually means. It's so again, we're saying still it's tick, 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 tick. If we are uh, moving, then it's going to be tick, 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 right? So uh, time dilation, time is expand type time changes, right? That's the, the sense of time changes as we move. And the, however, because gamma looks like this, where um, we have this, um, this uh, relationship of V over the, um, the rate of, or the speed of light, um, this difference really becomes, really only becomes apparent when uh, we travel at rates close to the speed of light. So um, classical objects like you, me, a basketball, 
there's a, that's really the sense of time there if it's moving is really negligible compared to if we were if the object or you or me were just standing in or standing still but if we were moving at say 2 times uh, 2.9 times 10 to the 8 meters per second that's really close to the speed of light our sense of time is going that that change that difference there is going to be really really dramatic um and the relationship really looks like this where right the the relationship looks like this where as we move uh say this is like 0 0.01% of the speed of light and then we get to this point where it's like um 0 0.99 uh, or 99 percent of the speed of light these are this is um a fraction these are the fraction of speed of light and the y-axis would be um the delta t the change in time so that difference gets much bigger as we go as we get cl closer to the speed of light so that is um that's the length that's the concept of length contraction or length um changing when we get closer to the speed of light and the concept of oh we just went over how this gamma also plays a role in uh, defining what the energy of an object is if it was still or if it was moving at the at the speed of light as well so that is a little rundown of special relativity we are going to get into more special relativity in the next video we're going to talk about uh, light cones and uh, those frames of references that are very important to us and then we're going to dive straight into gr so with that being said, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video.